you are tuning in to the number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast on YouTube. This is Mind Pump. All right, you guys ready for today's amazing giveaway? All right, first, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Uh, turn on your notifications so you know when we're about to post the video because if you comment in the first 24 hours, you can win an incredible prize. But today's prize is special, so I want to make it a little bit more challenging. Here's what you need to do. When we post this video in the first 24 hours in the comments, I want you to write a fantasy involving Adam and Justin. Please keep it clean and PC or as PC as you possibly can. In the first 24 hours, you write a fantasy that involves both Adam and Justin. Uh, Doug will go in there and pick the best one, and the best one will win this. You'll get a box of Four Sigmatics Mushroom Elixir Mix. This, The primary ingredient in this is Cordyceps. This is a great performance-enhancing supplement. In fact, in today's episode, I talk about Cordyceps, among other things. I love this stuff. I actually take it all the time. Those of you who've been listening to Mind Pump for a while know I rave about this. So if your comment is the one that's picked, you'll get a box of it sent to your house for absolutely free. Also, one more thing. The Phase 2 bundle promotion is still going on. So what we did is we took MAPS Performance. This is an athletic workout program, about three months long, and combined it with MAPS Aesthetic, which is a three-month bodybuilder program. Okay, You combine the two, you get the best of both worlds. Normally, they both retail together for close to $300, but right now, the Phase 2 bundle includes them both for $79.99. Have we lost our minds? Yes, we did, but that's okay. Take advantage. Go to MAPS. February.com. Sign up. It's a one-time payment. Plus, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Enjoy the show. Guys, I am uh, very excited and happy that you guys finally agreed <laughs> to do an episode on the weird yeah. supplements that are out there. That Sal's weird supplements. Actually act. work, you know, because there are some weird things out there, some compounds yeah. that actually do work and are backed by scientific study. But before we get into them, I want to talk a little bit about our history with supplements because I know, especially <laughs> you, Adam, you and I are probably more similar. Mm. Uh, even though I started younger than you, I'm pretty sure you've tried everything under the sun as a kid too, right? Yeah, no, I tried a lot of supplements. Yeah, probably, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, what was that, what was that like? If someone said it worked, you just bought it. Yeah, no, I okay. So I remember being like in my teenage years, going down to the you know back then it was Max Muscle, I think was the the, oh, yeah. the store that, they, that we'd go down there, and there was always some jacked dude behind the counter, right? And as a seventeen year old, this is what I take. Yeah, right, the seventeen year old skinny boy, and I think that's what the managers teach those guys to say. It's like when the dumb young kid comes in and asks you questions, just tell him that you take all this shit right here, right? <laughs> yeah. So I was definitely that kid that was a sucker for that. Walk in, dude's jacked. And he's telling me, you got to take this, you got to take this, you got to take that. And I'm like, all right, all of it. So, <clears throat> and I remember back then, I was probably, I'd say, spending anywhere between, you know, three to $500 a month, yeah. so, which was a lot of money. For a kid. A lot of yeah, money. Yes. You know, I was making $5 an hour. Well, well, and it was wasted a, money. Yeah. You know, and, you know, when you're when you're that young too, and you're and you're experimenting with things like that, and you're experimenting with so many different ones, it's actually really hard to tell what is working and what is not working. Yeah, because I was trying everything under the sun. Yeah, same here. And I think the big problem for me, looking back, obviously, because I did the same thing. I took every if I I would I read, I had Flex Magazine, Muscle and Fitness, Iron Man, Muscle Media 2000, uh, Muscle Mag. I mean, I literally had all the magazines. And I didn't know this back then as a kid. I know this now. But these magazines were literally uh, created and designed to be uh, marketing, very fancy marketing pamphlets. So when they put these magazines together, mm -hmm. it was very smart marketing, if, you know, if you, if you think about it. But what they did is, well, we're going to put articles together, and we're going to use these magazines to sell uh, products. And they were very effective at, at doing it. So if I read something in the magazine, then I would buy it and I'd try it out. So I tried all the weight gainers. I tried all the energy boosters, testosterone boosters, even though I was a 17-year-old kid. You couldn't boost my testosterone any more than it was. Yeah, but you know what? You know why that sold you? It's I'm sure, I'm sure it's the same reason why it sold me. When you're 17, okay, you're aware of what steroids are, right? Mm -hmm. You like know that steroids exist. And there's a part of you, or there's a part of me, I should say, that w wanted to try them, but was too scared to do steroids because yeah. that's, you know. You don't want to go full illegal. Right. I don't want to do something illegal, but I want the closest thing to that. So, and supplement companies knew this. 
And so they would market in some of the names of the supplements I bought. Matter of fact, the ones I spent the most money were the ones that sounded just like yeah. a real steroid. Dude, they some of the ads would have pictures of like uh, a needle, like, like beakers, yes, like chemistry, and then <laughs> they would take like a, a like an herb, right? They would take an herb, and every herb you can you can give it the chemical name, right? So rather than saying Sal Palmetto, it would be like this long chemical name, and instead of saying Sal Palmetto, they'd be like this. Be like, whoa, yeah, what is this new chemical? Trimbalones. Yeah, and it was <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and it would always have a picture of like a syringe or whatever. Yeah, but you're 100 percent right. They were they were trying to push that. So I started with all the popular stuff, and then eventually I moved to the back of the magazine. In the back of the bodybuilding magazines were these ads. This is back in the 90s. Now there were ads that looked shady. And I thought that's where the real stuff is. Oh, yeah. It's not this like mainstream stuff. I bet you it's this weird stuff. I remember in particular this one supplement. It was called, I think it was called Muscle Mix. Mm -hmm. And the picture, in the, it was a small ad in the back. And it was a vial. It looked like a glass ampule yeah. almost, like yeah. a vial. Yeah, yeah. And there were the before and after pictures always sold me. And right. I was like, this is going to totally work. And of course, it never did. Yeah, anything. I remember too. I mean, I wasn't like as drawn into to, you know, trying to get like a, some kind of like phony testosterone boosting, you know, like supplements. But I, I remember like one season when I was playing football and, and I had a few of my friends that were just like, dude, we got to do something else, but we don't want it. It was the whole thing. We don't want to go illegal with it, but we want to see what we can actually buy in person. And they would always have it like on the very bottom shelf that locked up, uh, you know, at one of those Max Muscle or GNCs, and you know, and then the guy behind there was like, "Okay, you'd like look around, like, you know, is anybody looking? Yeah, I got this." And it was like some kind of like Panther <laughs> <laughs> supplement, you know. And like my friend bought it, and then I'm like, "And see, I was so dumb, I didn't even like want to continually use it. I thought that just after a few, like, I might be able to feel something from it or whatever." And so, you know, I tried. I'm like, "Ah, oh, this doesn't even work." And then my friend was just like religious about it and and you know kept buying these things that were like at least like 200 bucks a bottle yeah there was a period of time so in the 90s in the late 90s uh pro hormones became a thing so these were hormones that your body uses to, in, in, <coughs> to convert into other hormones and of course the idea is take this and you'll have more testosterone um, the first one was dhea which you could still buy over the counter so dhea is a parent hormone and it's like oh if you take this then you know, there's only two or three steps and it becomes testosterone. It's not, it, it, that doesn't, it's not how it works. If a guy takes DHEA, he's not going to get higher testosterone. I actually get higher estrogen, but it was the first time you could buy a hormone right. over the counter. <clears throat> then the next one was androstenedown. Do you guys remember that? I do remember, remember that. Remember Mark McGuire? That's, so yes. I was just going to tell that story. Uh, I spent it. That was, I spent the most money during that time because I remember Mark McGuire coming back for the A's, and he looked like he put on 30 pounds of muscle. <laughs> and he oh said it was God. interesting. And he, monster. Was, he was sponsored by a company called, I want to say it was called Pinnacle. Mm. And they and it was Anderson that they, yeah, that yeah. they were selling, or how, I don't know how you pronounce it, but it was that's exactly what it was. And I bought a ton of those bottles, man. I actually thought it really, I felt it though. I thought mm. I felt it. I thought that was one of those ones that, man, this this is absolutely working. I feel like I'm stronger. I don't know how much of it was placebo effect. <laughs> yeah, it, it really yeah. doesn't. It was do, all the creams that got them that huge. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't do much. But that was, there was that that happened in the late 90s. And then in the early 2000s, um, they actually figured out a way to sell designer steroids over the counter. And that's because the, the laws at the time were very specific. You know, testosterone, uh, injectable testosterone, illegal or controlled, I should say. Uh, you know, uh, stenolzolol or whatever, Winstrol, you know, uh, you know, DECA, whatever. But if it wasn't specifically uh, illegal, then you can alter the molecule. Right, and by, now, like, by like one molecule, right? Yes. That's all it had to be off, and then now it's no longer illegal. It, it's gray mm -hmm. market. It would yeah. be called gray market, right? Not explicitly illegal. And so what, what supplement manufacturers did in the early 2000s is they actually, very smart, they went through all of the discarded, tested hormones that pharmaceutical companies had created. So pharma companies would test a, a new steroid or a new hormone, uh, use, always derived off testosterone, but changed to you know increase its anabolic properties or its androgenic properties, whatever. And oftentimes they would discard them because of side effects or it wasn't good for the liver or they had a better option somewhere else. Yeah. And you could get access to what these chemicals were. And so what people did as supplement companies is they'd get access to these chemicals and then they just produce them and sell them. Yep. And they would sell them as pro hormones, 
but they weren't. They were actual steroids. And I remember in the early 2000s, the first one that I took was called Superdrol. And Superdrol was very liver toxic, but it was a steroid. Yeah. And that really you felt or whatever. And I did a whole stint of that kind of stuff, not really realizing what the deal was. So that's kind of my history with, you know, with those kinds of stuff. I would say that the biggest the problem with doing all of that, besides the who knows potential damage I did to my body or my, my hormone system, really the biggest problem was it prevented me, looking back, it prevented me from really mastering exercise programming and diet mm -hmm. is what it did. Because I relied so much on supplements thinking that's what was going to do it that I just didn't pay a, a good enough attention to my programming and diet. And had I done that, I would have got way better games. Well, I think that's the problem even still today, right? I think that the, the, even the generation coming up right now that's getting marketed to with supplements – there's just this impression that supplements make such a big difference, you know, because you see the the Mark McGuire stories or you have these massive bodybuilders that are pros that are on magazines that are saying that they're taking all these stacks. And whether they are or not, it doesn't matter because what made that body look like that had very, very, very little to do with anything that they mm -hmm. were taking supplement wise and mostly with their diet and their programming and their consistency in that. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get that either. I didn't get that until my late 20s did that really come full circle for me. In my early 20s and teens, it was. It was all about trying the latest supplement and trying the latest diet gimmick that was out there. And really, I had never strung like real consistency in my training and diet for a long enough period of time to watch my body change. Later on, and this is what happened to me even with steroids. So I started experimenting with steroids in my early 20s, thinking that was the answer. Okay, I've tried all the over-the-counter stuff, and none of that's got mm -hmm. me to it. So maybe the only difference between me and those guys on the cover of the magazine, because I'm smart, I'm a trainer, I know that, like I thought I knew everything. It must be the only difference between me and them is they have the real stuff. And that's when I began starting to experiment with steroids. And I had the similar similar response with steroids as I did with these over-the-counter supplements. Maybe I felt a little stronger. Like definitely on the first time I took steroids, there was a, a, a huge strength increase. Mm -hmm. I noticed I got stronger every time I went into the workout, but my body wasn't changing. That was the main reason why I was taking it. I was insecure about how skinny I was. I wasn't getting any bigger though from it. I was getting stronger, but I wasn't getting bigger because my diet and my programming wasn't yeah. in You weren't in feeding it. You know what I find interesting about your story, Adam, is that you, uh, you're you very open about your anabolic steroid use in the past. You took, from the last time we talked, you took higher doses when you experimented in your 20s than yeah. you did when you were a professional when you actually won your pro card as a physique competitor and yeah. looked, I mean, you looked phenomenal and your doses of steroids were lower. The difference was? It was significantly lower. I did way more uh, steroids in my early 20s trying to figure it out, which ended up, by the way, screwing up my, my hormone profile completely. I mean, by my late 20s, I then had to take a therapeutic dose just to be normal. So even, and I have these pictures that are out on YouTube and I've posted a long time ago of when I was 30 years old and I fell out of shape. I was taking testosterone during that time. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people think I just wasn't working out. I wasn't eating. I wasn't mm -hmm. taking anything. And then all of a sudden I hopped on some gear and I got shredded or whatever. It's like, no, I was taking testosterone back then just to be normal, even though I was out of shape and not training. You just weren't working out. I just wasn't crappy. working out eating correctly. Then I started dieting, getting myself in shape. And then I got all the way down to 7% body fat, not messing with any more testosterone, keeping the exact same level as I was when I was fat. The only difference was I dialed in the diet and the consistency with training, and that got me to that 7%. Then from there, I was like, oh, wow, I got this all this attention from social media, from transforming my body. Let's take it to the next level and compete. That was when I decided, okay, if I'm going to get on stage and I'm going to compete with these competitors who are all taking anabolics, I'm going to take my dose up to a higher dose than a therapeutic dose. And that's when I began taking like 250 milligrams of tests. Before that, I was taking 125. Yeah. And so, and, and that in, is- in, in your 20s, you were taking way more oh, than that, God. just but, yeah. but, but not good diet. Not yeah, good and not seeing the results at all. Yeah. You know, I would see, and you would get a little bit. I would, of course, when you take testosterone, you, you put on some water weight, mm -hmm. you definitely gain some strength. But what was happening is I'd feel strong, I'd put a few pounds on, and then I'd come off the cycle, and then I would look exactly the same. Right. And and what I did, I fell in the trap of, oh, it must be because I took tests. Let me try D-ball now. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me try Anivar now. Oh, let me mm -hmm. add Echopoise in there. Oh, and I just started going through the whole cycle of, let me, just like 
like I did with supplements. Mm -hmm. Oh, it must not be that supplement. Let me try this one. Yeah. And never really getting the physique that I was always desiring. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say, and this is not one of the supplements that made this list because we were we're gonna, you know, we're talking about weird supplements that actually have studies that show that they work and they do have an effect on the body. Of course, they're not gonna come anywhere close to what you're gonna get with uh, you know, exercise, nutrition, and good sleep. Not even gonna come close. But they do, will have an effect. Um, now, this supplement I'm going I'm to mention right now is not a weird supplement. It's super well known. It's creatine. Creatine is one of those that is just very effective across the board. It's also good for overall wellness and health. That's always the number one supplement, I would say, for ergogenic effects, for muscle, for recovery, for strength, and across the board. But the next ones that we're going to talk about are the weird ones. These are the ones that um, they're you know either they're herbs or they're insect hormones or things that you know uh, you might not have heard of. Maybe you have heard of, but they have been shown in studies to have pretty interesting effects. Also, the only supplements that we're going to talk about right now. Here's the criteria: they have to have studies that support them, and they have to be ones that at least one of us has tried repeatedly and can say that they feel also. Because there are some supplements that didn't make this list that some studies show that they work. I've tried them. You guys have tried them. And like HMB is one of them. Lots of studies says it works. I never felt anything off of uh, HMB. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's based off of amino acid. Didn't do anything for me. Didn't make the list. So the ones on here that made the list, they're proven uh, to have some effect. And we've noticed uh, the effect when we've tried them ourselves. Mm -hmm. All right. So the first one uh, is an interesting one. I found out about this particular uh, supplement it's called ectisterone, which is a little bit more well-known nowadays. But I found out about it uh, years ago because I, I was scouring the library, believe it or not, and I found a book that quoted some Soviet-era studies mm. on, uh, pr on, on, on compounds that improve strength in muscle. Now, here's what's interesting about this, right? The Soviets, you know, remember this is a bit like very, very communist uh, country. They, uh, it was in their best interest to produce athletes that would win. This is the way they showcase the superiority, right, of their country. And they spent a lot of money and time on researching all kinds of different things on their athletes, training methodologies, uh, hormones. There's lots of, you know, hormone studies and then weird, yeah. you know, compounds. Every possible way that they could increase just a sliver of performance like they experimented with. Yeah, yeah. we got some great studies from that. Oh, yeah, for, for training in particular. For training, right? yes. Yes. So I found these old Soviet-era studies that talked about this compound that they, in the study, compared to low dose of Dianabol. Dianabol is a very common, old anabolic steroid and strong and it, it's a strong one and so they compared ectisterone and if i if i recall correctly in the study they compared it to 10 milligrams a day of dianabol not a huge dose nonetheless if you are naturally take 10 milligrams a day of dianabol you're going to feel it they compared the two and ectisterone actually outperformed it wow. in a short study i think it was a like a 60-day study or whatever so that like blew my mind and so i read more stuff all these soviet studies and i was able to find ectisterone back then. It was very, very hard to find. And I tried it and it actually worked. It now, actually did work. Okay. So now what's the origin? Like what does it uh, consist of the compound? Yeah. What's it derived from? So ectisterone is a phytosteroid. So it's a, it's a plant hormone. It's actually found in spinach. Spinach is one place where you get it. You'd have to eat a shit ton of spinach though. Dude. So Popeye was right. Yeah, I know. Right. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> shit. How funny is that? <laughs> Isn't that weird? So you, you, uh, you, you find it in, in plants. Spinach has it. You uh, Now to be fair, you'd have to eat a lot of spinach in order to get the effective dose of ectisterone. It would sure. it just wouldn't work that way. Uh, but you find it. It's also a insect hormone. So it's a hormone in insects that uh, produces molting, you know, when, when insects molt or whatever. Oh, yeah. So this hormone causes that to happen in insects. So it is a hormone. It's just not a human hormone. When we take it, and they've tested it, lots of studies, right? Uh, they've tested it to see, does it change testosterone levels? Does it, you know, lower estrogen? Like mm. what's happening? Because the effects- you when you, insect-like effects. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, like the fly. Yeah. If you take it, you feel it, and it feels like your testosterone is going up. It feels like your libido is going up, that kind of stuff. doesn't affect hormones. doesn't raise testosterone. In fact, that's, how, that's yeah. how they marketed it back in the day. They marketed yeah, it as strange. a uh, testosterone booster. 
but it doesn't raise testosterone. Now, I don't, I wasn't familiar with this one. So when did it actually hit the market and become popular? It wasn't popular and it, it, until recently where it's starting to get a little popular. And the reason why it's starting to get a little popular is because there were uh, there was another study that was done that showed that and up until this point there were all there were just Soviet studies and animal studies. Animal studies consistently showed you give this to sheep, they grow more more wool and they get bigger and stronger. You give it to pigs, they get stronger. You give it to rats, mice, they get stronger. And the human studies were like not that good except for the Soviet ones which sometimes we don't trust because we think you know, maybe they were bullshitting or yeah. whatever. What else were they on? They did a study on uh, on athletes, and they found that it reliably built muscle and strength and accelerated what's called protein synthesis, right? Where your body's take, taking protein and turning it into new muscle. Because of that, the uh, the organization... What's the testing organization for the Olympics? Is it not WADA? Uh, something like that. But. Yeah. So the... the, the, the Is Olymp it a banned supplement? They reviewed it because they... We're potentially going to ban it. Mm. Then it got attention. Oh yeah! If the Olympics banned something, people are going to take. People it. are going to go buy it. So they did are. it? Did it get banned? Did not get banned. Okay, but that doesn't mean it won't get banned in the future. Hmm. But they did review it because they said that. And it, is that recent that they just reviewed it? It was like a couple years ago. Okay. And since then, and here's the deal: real ectosterone is relatively hard to find. Easier to find today uh, than than it used to be, but still, there's a lot of crappy stuff that's out there, and you got to take the right dose and whatever. But it, you can find more of it now um, in uh, you know better quality or whatever. Um, like I said, it's it's hard to find. But because they said they were going to maybe ban it, and they're reviewing it. Uh, it started to get more popular. But what it does is it it accelerates protein synthesis. It actually improves cholesterol profile. It speeds up the production of keratin. So you'll notice nails will grow faster. Mm. Your skin will start to you know uh, feel like it's you know feeling better or whatever. Um, and some people can cause uh, gut issues. Very weird, interesting Sounds supplement. Like it has a little bit of growth hormone effect too. Almost, right? Yeah, almost. Now, here's the thing, uh, and this is my experience. It, you take it for two months, and then it doesn't really do anything after that. Oh, so it's not like you can just mm. keep taking it. Mm -hmm. I feel like whatever, whatever, you know, however it's working, your body starts to adapt, and then you start to get no effects from it. When you go off, you do lose some of the gains you now, got. Now, do you with find it. this? I find this common in a lot of natural supplements. I feel like if you've never taken, in fact, some of those things will go on the list and I'll share my experience with some of the other ones. I actually haven't taken this one, uh, but I have taken some of the other ones we're going to talk about. And that is something that I find common with a lot. Is yes. That I'll notice like, oh, wow, I'd never noticed this. And then mm -hmm. I'll feel it for a while and I'll, I'll start taking it consistently. And then it seems it to like kind of- trails off. Yeah. And then it fades off. Is that is that normal? Yeah. I it, just like anything, I think whatever receptor it attaches, this happens with caffeine, right? So the first time you have caffeine, right. it's like, oh my God, I'm energized and you yeah, need more and more. Your, whatever receptor it attaches to, your body's always trying to be in balance. And so it starts to shut down or shut off receptors or it'll stop producing- the chemicals that it's making you produce more of or whatever to balance you out. So you do get a bit of withdrawal when you go off. In other words, uh, you start to you go off, your libido's low for a week or two, you're, you lose some of your gains, and then you come back to normal. Overall, though, if you cycle it, you do uh, end up uh, better, I, I would say, overall. And do you recommend taking it with anything else, or is there like is it like less beneficial if you're not hitting protein intakes? What are High some protein. Okay. Yes, because it increases protein, and your appetite goes up. That's right. You take right. ectosterone, you get hungry. So you do want to increase. So great for the the hard gain. Yeah. Now they're now they 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 think that it, it's mediated by the estrogen receptor, which is kind of interesting. So I don't know if this is a good one for women to take, mm. um, and I don't know if there's any studies that were done on women. It's all men. You know who I've had uh, try ectosterone several times. I heard you talking to Doug with it. Doug. Doug's yeah. actually had. Doug, uh, what was your Doug, you, yeah? Describe your, your experience. Yeah, I definitely uh, felt like my appetite went up. Uh, vivid dreams. Yeah, that's another one. That's another one. Uh, and yeah, I felt like I got some benefits in, like, in the gym as like well. Like sexual vivid dreams or just No, vivid? just vivid in general. <laughs> just Could be dreams. sexual, maybe not, okay? <laughs> Did you notice a boost in libido? Because that's right. what I would always notice from it. Well, uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I became ravenous. Boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. Right. A ravenous Doug is pretty yeah. scary. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that that's the first one. Um, the next one is one of my favorite uh, supplements of all time because I get uh, health benefits from it as well. And this is one that I'll throw in uh, relatively consistently, meaning that I'll take it, uh, you know, 
for a few months, and I'll maybe stop for a month or two and then take it again. And this is cordyceps. And I've had you guys all try yeah. Yeah. cordyceps in the past. So what's your guys' experience with cordyceps? I feel like I, I feel like I have more energy in my workout. Mm -hmm. And it's very subtle. It's not like caffeine. Uh, it's not like uh, you know the sodium in, in boost that we're doing recently. I've noticed I literally just feel like I have a, a little bit extra gas in the tank. That's mm -hmm. about it. Yeah, I... I Tended to uh, you know supplement with that when I was doing more long bouts of of uh, you know cardiovascular type training and workouts and it definitely helped give me that stamina uh, you know in my workouts and stuff so it, was, it actually you know it had a had a massive benefit to it yeah cordyceps is a weird one too by the way it's a fungus that grows in I think caterpillars it like takes over the caterpillar it's and a mushroom it's, yeah it's the same yeah. one that turns it in almost into a zombie yeah it kills them it like yeah. comes out of them and then that's where you get that's how where you weird get that we benefit from that so you want to know when this became a thing in the in the US the uh, when, when was the Olympics where China hosted the Olympics the summer yeah. Olympics was that 2000 okay so was uh, now refresh my memory so was this the women's team yes uh, that, okay and, and this is where it almost or it did get banned because it was so effective with their it, it was either their track and field team, or I forget which um, which ones were were caught using it, it. it. It was the female swim team, I believe. Swim team, okay. and they were crushing. Yeah, and the, they came out and said, "Here's why they're crushing. It's because they're taking uh, cordyceps." And then it started to gain some uh, popularity. My first experience with cordyceps was when I was doing jujitsu. That's where I noticed the biggest difference. Um, cordyceps in studies has been shown to improve VO2 max over placebo. Mm. So your VO2 max gets better, reduces inflammation. And in men with low testosterone, it can reliably raise testosterone. So if you have low testosterone as a guy or you oh, struggle with that, that, yeah, cordyceps will raise uh, testosterone levels. Only if you're low, though. So that's some, that's like a lot of these herbs, right? That's yeah, like, very. It's, it's hard to find an herb that'll, that'll raise high testosterone, you know. But if you have low testosterone, yeah, exactly. It's an, It has adaptogenic qualities, meaning it helps the body uh, deal with stress. For, for me, it, I'll take cordyceps when I want to do a long, hard work. If I'm going to do like like 20 reps on the squat, I'm going to take cordyceps. If I'm going to yeah. do a lot of volume, I'll take – you're less sore. If you yeah. take cordyceps, you'll notice you're just less sore, less damage, less It's all the work capacity type uh, workouts and like phases I would get into. This, this paired beautifully with that. Yeah. Now, here's something else that's interesting about this. So I noticed this when – you guys remember when I had the sauna in my house? I had to get rid of it because obviously the, it's in the baby's room, so we had to get rid of it. But I had bought like a sauna mm -hmm. and I was doing sauna regularly. I took cordyceps and my heat resistance exploded. I remember you saying that. Yeah, like I could sit in the yes. sauna way longer. Strange. So I talked about it on the podcast a long time ago because one of our sponsors, Four Sigmatic, makes, uh, has uh, cordyceps. Actually, it's the best, uh, not just because we work with them. They have one of the best um, cordyceps uh, supplements because they have a, what's called a dual extraction process. And I was talking about how it improved my heat tolerance. Well, anyway... I got a bunch of DMs from uh, hmm. construction workers, uh, roofers, mm -hmm. people who work outside in the sun. Oh. And they were like, dude, this is a game changer. Like, I'm, I'm working. I'm not dying out in the sun. It makes dude, a there's got to be something to that because that's usually when uh, I notice the most fatigue is when I get really, really hot, you know, at the, towards the end of, of the workout where I'm just, I've been running hills or whatever, and I'm just like dogging it at that point. But uh, when I was supplementing with that, it was definitely like, I, I, I could feel that I was still hot, but I didn't have have that same like you know i didn't feel like i was being pressed down like my body was shutting down uh, that's what i noticed in jujitsu i would take it before jujitsu and i would just roll and not and sweat and feel like i was totally fine uh, versus when i didn't i would get that feeling where you feel bogged down yeah. by the heat or whatever right so interesting supplement also has some anti-cancer properties in some studies um so uh, that one i that one's one of those supplements i would say it's, it's cool to take on and off kind of all the time now and that one is matter nutritionally what i'm pairing it with or what my desired outcome is i don't think you need to change your nutrition uh to take it yeah. um whereas like with ectosterone you probably want to bump your protein definitely not as pronounced as ecti like ectosterone you feel but you also feel when it drops off cordyceps just kind of feels good yeah. all the time when you take it um the next one i've actually given this one to you guys with so for the audience who doesn't know, this is one of my favorite things to do, right? <laughs> um, uh, well, before we do a podcast- A lot, before, of, lot of trust in this relationship. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Or before we create a new program or we're going to go do something that requires some creativity, 
I'll do like a supplement stack or mix for uh, Adam and Justin. And they just take whatever I give them, right? Yeah. So literally, I'll hand them some pills, some powder. It's like and I'll, Russian roulette. Yeah, and I'll be like, here, try this. Let me know what you think. Uh, well, lion's mane is one of the things that I'll give you guys sometimes with uh, caffeine. And you guys know now. We'll, we'll talk about it. Yeah. Um, lion's mane is a, is a nootropic. Studies show when people take it over a few weeks or six to eight weeks, I think some of the studies show. It improves cognition. Um, it's got some enzyolytic properties, so it's good with uh, anxiety. Um, helps with depression. I love lion's mane just for, for again, for the mind. You yeah, know what I mean? this is one of those like I've been taking before our podcast and noticing that the longer uh, span I've been taking it, the more effective and the more I've actually noticed its benefits of you know the sharpness and uh, me being able to recall information and things like that. Now, this is a supplement space that has exploded in the last, I'd say, five years or so. Is this one of the most common ingredients that are found in all these neuro supplements yes, that are out there? Yes, because it's got, it's got some of the best studies. Okay. So there's a lot of stuff out there that promises to boost uh, cognition, right? But there's not a lot of science behind them. Um, like for example, I pull up a study here. Um, this was uh, this was a study published in uh, Phytotherapy Research in 2009. They took 30 older adults with mild cognitive impairment to take either lion's mane extract or a placebo every day for 16 weeks. In the cognitive tests given at weeks 8, 12, and 16 of the study, members of the lion's mane group showed significantly greater improvements compared to people with uh, the placebo. So they see that it, it It also, there's another study, check this one out. This was in biomedical research in 2011. They did a study and they found that lion's mane protected against memory problems caused by the buildup of amyloid beta, uh, which is what causes uh, uh, Alzheimer's. Plaque. Yes. Yeah. Um, there's also a neuroprotective effect against is is ischemic stroke in the brain. Hmm. Um, there was another study with, post -men with menopausal women that showed that it helped with uh, depression. And then cancer, here's another thing about it. It helps reduce the size of cancerous colon tumors in mice. And in Chinese medicine, lion's mane is a is a uh, it's one of those anti-cancer or you know plants or whatever they'll get. it's a mushroom now back to my point mm. about all these neuro supplements that are out there now what makes the difference between like this lion's mane and some of the synthetic stuff out there that claims to do the same thing you know people people confuse stimulant with uh something that improves cognitive function so a stimulant can improve cognitive function if the reason why your cognitive function is down is due to being tired, mm. right? So if I'm like dragging ass and I drink coffee, I will have improved uh, cognitive performance. But a real, like like a, if we're going to be more specific, a for a supplement to improve cognitive function, it has to do it all the time. Mm. Not just because you're tired and you're waking up. Like mm. there's that famous study that was done on, uh, Ad uh, I think it was Adderall or AD ADHD medication. People who take ADHD medication think that it makes them sharper or smarter, oh, right? I remember seeing this. Uh -huh. And they did a study and they found that it didn't do that at all. <laughs> what it did is it made people think you they were smarter. perceived that you're smarter. Yeah, because they, they're more focused or enjoy what they're, what they're learning, you know, versus not taking it. But it really didn't improve yeah. any cognitive function. Lion's mane has been shown to have a positive, actual real deal positive effect on cognitive So how function. would you describe these as like more of like a vitamin or a nutrient, you know, that may, the brain may benefit from in a different way that it's not getting... Yeah, so I, I wouldn't say it's something you take and feel right away, although I do enjoy it with caffeine. It's what you said, Justin. You take it kind of on a regular basis. Yeah. And after about six weeks, eight weeks or so, uh, you are just you just remember things a little easier. You're a little bit sharper. I, I notice a better verbal fluency. Mm -hmm. I can grab words easier. Where I, where, you know, Otherwise, I would have to think a little harder. So yeah, it's one of, those, the same thing. one of those things. Uh, but again, it's backed by, uh, by studies and, and our experience. Uh, the next one, this one's really interesting. Um, the, 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 no, the name that you'll find it sold under is horny goat weed. Yeah. You guys know why they Kinda call gets it? gets right to the point. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it my, it's combines my, my three favorite things. Do you, do you know, what, <laughs> and okay. weed, do you know why they call it horny goat weed? Mm. So, uh, well, I'm, I'm let, let me guess, yes. right? Like a, a goat uh, was just, you know, roaming around the pasture and just started to eat one of those and was just randy on everybody. Yeah. So there were goat herders. Actually, this is a, um, I believe it's an Ayurvedic uh, supplement, but they, there were goat herders noticed that the goats would eat this particular plant and then they'd go just have sex all the time. And they're like, what, what's going on here? And so they named it. So that's what they called uh, horny goat weed. It 
consistently and predictably will raise libido in people, so both I, men and women. I have the most experience and with women. The, uh, mm. ex, uh, most experience with this one and the last one, and this one. I I use I used before I had uh, my big coming off testosterone crash, and then I used uh, mo- more recently when I was coming off testosterone. So um, I never know. We had teas that were horny goat weed. I never really noticed anything seven eight years and beyond when I tried this. Mm. When I really noticed the effect on this was when I came off of testosterone and uh, back in what was just now been three and a half four years maybe mm-hmm. a little bit longer now, right around four years. Uh, on the podcast when I shared all that, I, w- I mean, I went through like depression over like coming down. I mean, my and libido love- was gone. Yeah, libido was gone. My, uh, I was just, just energy was low. Didn't want to train. It was a really tough time for me for about three to six months there. And I, w- you were sending me all kinds of different stuff to stack. I was taking this and Ash- ashwagandha and some other tongue cat Ali and some other things you had me on. And I did notice a big difference in this. I noticed it would... Now, it didn't take me from a guy who had like no libido at all to all of a sudden I was wanting to have sex twice a day or something. But I went from somebody who like felt like their sex drive had completely gone away to at least wanting to have sex multiple times a week, which was a very big deal for me mm-hmm. and in my relationship because that was one of the things that was tough was, you know, here I am. I've been in this relationship for at that time seven years with Katrina. And because I'm coming off this testosterone, all of a sudden it's affecting our sex life. And I don't care who you are. That's never good for the relationship. Mm-hmm. And so I was using that supplement during the time and it really helped mitigate that. I noticed it then. I didn't notice it before when I had normal testosterone or high testosterone levels. Yeah. Is there a reason for that? Yeah. So in the studies, they show that it will raise testosterone in men with low testosterone. Okay. So if you have normal testosterone, or especially if you're on anabolics and they're high, yeah. Ain't doing uh, nothing. it's not going to do anything for you. Now, the compound in, there's a compound in hoarding goat weed, and I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Icarin, I believe uh, is what it's called, is a PDE5 inhibitor. Again, I, I hope I'm getting this right. Now, this is a similar action to Viagra. Now, it's nowhere near as potent as Viagra, but in, in a similar way, it it helps uh, reduce the enzyme that breaks down nitric oxide. So, uh, in a, in a, not nearly as strong as prescription Viagra or you know Cialis or whatever, but it's a natural boner pill. And mm-hmm. this is legit. They actually test it and show that uh, men's, <laughs> what they say in the studies cracks me up, erection quality. Ooh. I don't know. How, how do they test the erection quality? Yeah, this is a good one. This is a good one, Sal. Yeah, yeah. I can hang three rings on this one. Yes, it's, yeah. 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 Many, I can just see scientists. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. yeah your last boner can only hold yeah. one ring. Ooh. Yeah, five on it. Better up the dose. So uh, increases uh, e- e- erection uh, quality. Um, it's also uh, good for fertility in, in some cases. Um, and it is it consistently raised libido in in men and in women and in women. So trick, check this out, right? So horny goat weed, like other you know adaptogenic type supplements, tends to balance out hormones. So in men with low testosterone, it raises testosterone. In postmenopausal women, guess what it does? Mm. Raises estrogen. Mm. Oh, so postmenopausal women will take it and they'll notice a rise in estrogen. They'll start to feel kind of better as well. Mm. Now again, this is one of those supplements that you'll take you'll feel it for about 45 to 60 days. And then it's, it feels like it's not doing anything for you anymore and you got to go off. Well, again, this I actually felt it consistently when I was going through the coming off. You did? Yes. Oh, cool. I did notice that with that. That was like, it was one of those supplements that, again, in the past, uh, I messed around with, didn't think anything. When I was a kid, I remember hearing about it and hearing that it could raise testosterone levels and thinking that at you know 19 years old, I could take it and I would feel a difference. And I was like, this is trash. I don't mm-hmm. feel anything. It wasn't until much until later in my life, into my 30s, when you recommended it to me when I was going through that. And I noticed a big difference. I, I mean, we it was a consistent supplement that I took in that last year that I felt like at least help me have sex sometimes during that time, that during that process. Yeah, that's cool. And you know, because it uh, it helps with nitric oxide, theoretically, it could be a supplement that helps with the pump. Mm. Um, and theoretically, it might even lower blood pressure in people with high blood pressure because it helps open up and relax mm. uh, the blood oh, vessels. Interesting. Yeah, but it's it, again, it's backed by studies and it's one of the more consistent libido boosters. So if you're you know dealing with libido issues or whatever, I would say try this one out um, and it, it'll probably work for you. All right. The last one is, uh, it's got a lot of studies supporting it. You actually mentioned it, which was ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is a staple uh, compound in Ayurvedic uh, medicine. 
Um, I believe the name means horse or something like that, or it might even be worse, like horse piss or something like that. <laughs> it stinks. If you've ever smelled ashwagandha, it th it doesn't smell. Oh, wait, uh, I've taken it. I've never like you know just smelled it individually. Yes. Oh, it's awful in liquid form. Yes, oh, yeah? yes, oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. If you try get that. the powder or pill form, if you can, it tastes terrible. <laughs> now, ashwagandha is one of my favorite other supplements. Well, I, isn't it? Isn't it up there with like creatine as far as one of the most researched? Uh, Herbs as far as herbs are concerned, I would say, I mean, ginseng is super, super researched, uh, oh, you know, ginseng, but ashwagandha yeah. lately, there's a lot of studies coming out uh, supporting it. When I take ashwagandha, here's what I notice. Uh, I get way faster recovery. Mm -hmm. I get way faster recovery and I seem to feel better with less sleep and feel better uh, when I'm stressed out. It does help manage cortisol yeah. in people. It's definitely one of those if I'm feeling like uh, a lot of stress and I'm carrying a lot with me like, and I'll take it, it helps to alleviate that quite a bit. Yeah, there was a study that showed that it increased power output uh, with athletes. So it's you'll notice you'll get stronger uh, by taking ashwagandha uh, as well. Now, is it matter how what the dose is on something like this? Is you, this something that you have to take a, a good amount for it to work, or is it... You would take the amount that's done in studies. You know, here's the thing with all these compounds that we're talking about. Um, you're gonna, if you When you look them up, uh, you, you'll see in the studies that they used a particular dose and that there's a recommended dose. This does not mean if you take more, it's going to be more effective. In fact taking more sometimes makes them less effective or can cause problems. So don't make that mistake, and I'm speaking from personal experience, yeah. uh, taking more doesn't make it more effective. Definitely definitely take the recommended dose, nothing more than that. And this is also something that is found in our Organifi green juice, right? Don't they have that in this? Green juice does have some ashwagandha in there. It's just, oh. it's one of those, it's a great overall, you know, makes you feel kind of better, uh, you know, supplement. Um, it, it raises HDL, it lowers HDL. It's great for infertility. In men, it'll improve. Uh, so I have a, a friend of mine who's trying to who's trying to conceive with his wife, and uh, his sperm count was a little low. So he asked me if, like what, what he could take, and I, there was other things I had him, I recommended, but I also recommended ashwagandha, and it made a big difference, and they got pregnant. And this mm. fall, this falls in the category uh, adaptogens, right? Adaptogenic. Now explain that again to the audience on exactly what that means. Adaptogenic uh, herbs are or, or compounds are compounds that help the body deal with stress. So think of all the negative things that. Okay, think about it this way. Imagine if you have a, a bucket. It's a like one gallon bucket, and that's your stress bucket. So every stress that you have, you know, bad sleep, argument with the wife, I'm in traffic, um, you know, whatever, all the stress fills up that bucket. Once it overflows, now you're now you're gonna feel like shit, no matter what. Like now your your workouts are too hard for your body because you've already got too much stress. You're not feeling good. Cortisol goes up, testosterone drops, and women progesterone and estrogen kind of get messes up, and you just kind of feel crummy. What what uh, what these type of uh, compounds do is they make the bucket bigger, mm -hmm. so now your body can deal with more stress and you get less of the negative uh, effects. Oh, of now that makes a lot more sense. Why it's in the green juice tin, since the green juice is something that you take more like on a regular basis to, for you to do that to be able to handle more stress. On so a how day. would I use ashwagandha? I would use it like this: if you're going to go through a period where uh, you know maybe it's finals week. Uh, you're you in just school, had a baby, or you just had a baby, like yeah. I did, right? Or you're about to go into a phase of training where you're going to do a lot more sets, a lot more volume. Maybe pre-contest, pre-contest for for competitors is very very stressful. Um, it's not it's super common for them to get sick pre-contest. They're doing so much cardio and working out and diet or whatever. So anytime you see yourself going into a period like that, ashwagandha would be a good supplement to help your body handle those types of things. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think it's also important right now too, that you address um, kind of our stance on some, because we're getting a lot of new people that are following uh, mind pump, especially through YouTube and stuff now and address our overall stance on, on supplementation in general. I know when we first started the podcast, if you've been listening since day yeah. one, you kind of know what that is. But if you're tuning in right now, and it might sound like we're like, oh, all these yeah. supplements are, are miraculous. It's a big billboard for supplements. Right. Yeah, so to give you an analogy, if diet, exercise, and sleep uh, and lifestyle were the engine to your car, supplements would be the air filter. So that's the difference that they'll make, right? So if I have a car and it's maxed out and souped up and I'm like, I'm trying to squeeze 
one more horsepower or whatever. Mm. You know, my, it's my, more like a decal. Yeah, my, 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 <laughs> my, my, my Canon air filter might make it, you know, it a little bit, cool. a little yeah. bit better or like an exhaust or something like that, right? right. Um, or downpipes, but it's not a turbo. It's not a supercharger. You know, those those you're talking about anabolic hormones. Even hor- even steroids are, are probably not like a turbo. No. Or or you know. A supercharger. No. When you say when you say diet, sleep, programming, I mean those are the bigger. That's it's the, like ninety. That's the eight, engine. 99%. That's the nitrous. That's yeah. the turbo. All these other things are like the little bolt-ons, like you were just just using as an analogy. Yeah. So I, you know, I use these. First off, I, I probably have a bit of a supplement problem, so I like to mess with things just to see what they do. But here's the reality: if I'm being totally objective, I'll use these supplements like a Swiss Army knife. So, oh man, you know, uh, next week I'm going to be, you know, doing a lot of extra work, or it's going to be really stressful. So maybe I'll try. I'll start taking some ashwagandha, right? Or hey, I'm going to go on vacation with the wife. You know, next month I'm gonna start taking some horny goat weed so we can have fun on. You know, so I'll do that kind of. That, that, you know, that would be the way I would say to use these things. Um, if you're really dialed in, you'll notice. If you're not that dialed in, you might have trouble noticing that they're gonna do anything. But I think it's fun to talk about. Again, no, it's it's very. I think yeah. it's fun, and I love to hear you go deep on all these things. But I think it's important, and that's why I think we shared this the story at the beginning, right? Of like our journey of trying all these supplements. This is no different, right? Mm-hmm. If you're some young kid that's trying to build muscle. You know, the answer is not in these five weird supplements that's going to give you, you know, pack on five or 10 pounds more muscle. Or if you're somebody who's struggling with fat loss, this is not the end, nor is any other supplement over the counter. These are not the answer to your problem. Like you've got to take care of the big yeah. rocks. It's first. just fun to explore once you have all your ducks in a row and, right. and you've done all the work and, you know, you, you're, the consistency is there and, you know, you're accounting for nutrition, sleep and, and exercise and all that's kind of working out. So it's a fun thing to explore. Totally. Look, Mind Pump is required. Recorded on video as well as audio. Come find us on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. This is the part of, of happiness that people don't usually understand. True happiness requires unhappiness. Why? Because purpose requires pain. To find meaning in your life, or, and there's, and, you know, pain is, is just incredibly sacred. If we miss out on pain, we miss out on post-traumatic growth, we miss out on experiences, we miss out on 